Okay, in this video we're going to talk about solving rational and cubic inequalities. In both cases you're going to need to use a number line to be able to properly solve these. Now if you want to solve a rational inequality, you have to have a fraction less than or greater than or less than or equal to something um, and then zero. Okay, so it has to just be one fraction, the inequality symbol, and then zero. So first thing we need to do is have zero over here. I'm going to do that by subtracting this expression from both sides. So I'll have x minus 1 over x minus 2 minus x minus 1 is less than 0. Okay, let me go ahead and clean this up so I don't have parentheses here. <clears throat> okay. Well, so now I want this to be one fraction, and right now it's two. So I want this to have the same denominator as this. So the way I'm going to do that is to multiply this by x minus two in the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to go ahead and write it like this, just for to avoid any possible sign errors. Okay, so I've multiplied the top and the bottom by x minus two. Okay, now that they have the same denominator, I can go ahead and combine them into one fraction. Okay, do I have enough room? <clears throat> okay, now let's clean this up. X minus one minus x squared plus 3x minus 2 over x minus 2 is less than 0. Okay, I'm going to finish it up here. So that gives me negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 over x minus 2 is less than 0. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so whenever you have a rational expression and you're using it to solve an inequality, what you do is you need to find the critical points, and you do that by solving for the numerator, set, set the numerator equal to zero, and set the denominator equal to zero. So, for the numerator, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to solve this by factoring. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 3 and add to give me negative 4, so that would be negative 3 and negative 1. So that means x minus 3 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. So that means x equals 3, or x equals 1. Okay, and the easier one is the denominator. x minus 2 equals 0 is simply x equals 2. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is use an analysis line where I'm going to write each of those values on the line. So I have a 1, a 2, and a 3. Now, because this is a strictly less than here, none of these values will be included within our intervals. Okay, so um, some people will put an open circle there just to remind themselves that none of these values are included. So what I'm going to do <coughs> is use values within these intervals here to check and see when we get less than zero. So let's use an x equals zero here. Now if you put that in, you'll have uh, zero, zero, negative three over negative two, which is a positive. So negative divided by negative is positive. If I use uh, x equals 1.5, I'll get <coughs> something that's negative. Okay. If I use x equals 2.5, I'll get a positive. <coughs> and if I use x equals 5, I'll get positive over uh, negative over positive, so that will be a negative. Okay, 
So the intervals where this is less than zero are in here and in here. So the ones we want to use are from one to two, and remember those are not in our endpoints because um, that would make the numerator equal to zero or the denominator um, equal to zero, which would be undefined. So that would either be equal to zero or undefined, which we can't do. And then three to positive infinity. <coughs> okay, so these cause um, we cannot use. in our inter interval because they make the left equal zero and this one we cannot use in our interval because it makes the left undefined because it causes division by zero. Okay. Okay, to solve this um, cubic inequality, I first need to factor it. So there's the greatest common factor of x, so that'll leave me with x squared minus 9 is greater than 0. Now this is a difference of two squares, so I can factor it again to x minus 3 times x plus 3 is greater than 0. And I just want to set each of these factors equal to 0, so x equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. Okay. Now, even though we're solving an inequality, I want to set the factors equal to zero because these are going to tell me my endpoints. Okay. So that will be x is equal to three, or x is equal to negative three. I'm going to take those endpoints and put them on, put them on an analysis line. Okay. So I've got a negative three, a zero, and a three. Okay. So I need to pick values within these intervals to see if I'm going to get a positive or a negative. <coughs> if I get something positive, it will be, um, it'll work for this inequality. If I get it negative, then it won't because we're looking for greater than zero. So if I tried something like x equals negative 10, that'll give me a negative, a negative, and a negative, which will be, so negative, 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 which is a negative. Okay. In this interval, if I tried something like x equals negative 1, I will get a negative, a negative, and a positive, which will be positive because it's negative, negative, positive. Okay. If I tried something like x equals 1, I'm going to get a positive, a negative, and a positive. Positive, negative, positive. So that one's negative. And if I try a positive number greater than 3, like x equals 10, I'm going to get a positive, a positive, and a positive. So all of these are positive here. Okay, so we're looking for the intervals in which it was greater than zero, so that would be in here and in here. So it'll be from negative three to zero, union three, positive infinity.